everyone. Let's go. And good morning. Um, this is Esther Nagel of Space to Breathe Academy.com, and I am here today with Dale Darley of the Songwriters Academy. And we are doing the first, this is the first of what is now going to be a regular fortnightly conversation. Uh, you may have seen us a, we, a fortnight ago, we did one of these and we enjoyed it so much that during the conversation that we had, we both had the same idea. I would love to know if we could work out at what point during the conversation we had it, because I reckon we probably had it at the same time. Yes. Um, and we, but before we ended our conversation after that fortnight, we decided we were going to do this every fortnight. So we're going to have, this is called now the Wisdom Within. And we're going to be sharing tools and insights and different things that we've learned through our colourful lives <laughs> um, and our interesting journey into ourselves and into life and what life has taught us over the years. So hopefully this is going to lead to a really interesting series of conversations which will offer you, the listeners, some really powerful insights and uh, strategies that you can take into your own life as well. So, hi, Dale. Hello. It's, do you know, it's so funny, Esther, how, you know, we had decided that we would talk about letting go today. And, um, well, they're just the perfect, the perfect opportunity presented itself this morning. I've been doing a lot of letting go, which um, if, if time allows, um, I'll, I'll share. But what happened this morning was I had decided that I was going to make a video. Are you getting feedback off me? Uh, oh, I can hear something, yeah. Um, yeah. Let me, is that, is that better? That's better, yeah. Yeah, yeah cool. No, no, they still come from. Hold on. Um, Have you got a bit? Try that. Video. Try that. No, no it's still coming. Try that. I birds singing no. in the background. <laughs> well, you can hear birds singing because there's millions of birds outside. But I can't work out if it's my if it's my That's, mic. It's, I can't hear it now. Oh, great! Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, how funny! It's been a day of tech. I'm going to sit a little bit further back. Then maybe that'll help. Okay. Says so she's so she falling over and smacking into the wall. That'll certainly let me, <laughs> let me let go. But I was making a video this morning, and it was I'd meant to chop it up into lot of, lots of little bits and pieces, and I started talking, and it just went it went on and on. And I looked at the time, and I thought, well, that's okay. If I keep it to ten minutes, it's great. And it's for the it was for the big book in a circle. So I'm 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 getting really close to my ten minutes, thinking about wrapping it up. Birdie dog comes in and he looks at me and I think, well, I'm not going to pay any attention to you because I'm almost at the end and I need to wrap up and give it a good ending. So he comes and he's like doing this to me and I'm thinking, go away. The next thing, he's under my desk. He is causing havoc and then everything went out. Because oh. he, had, he had got round the back, he had pulled a cape and I just... And I sat here and I went expletive, expletive, <laughs> several more expletives. And then I just decided, why don't I delete the video? Because actually that wasn't what I wanted to do. So I, so I kind of let that go. But while I was sitting looking at UCAM, there was all these, um, they got all these like little things you can play with. And I, I pressed one and I was completely distorted. So I made a little video about changing your perspective while I, I mean, why I've posted it all over social media, I don't know, but it was, but it was a great way to let go of, I am going to kill you. <laughs> My little well, baby. Made, that video certainly made me laugh. So it was, it had value. It definitely had value. And it, it, it enabled you to take that, away and do something else and change your perspective and it allows you to let go and I'm sure that when you actually do the next when you do the video again and you've locked Ferdy out of the room uh, <laughs> <laughs> then that video is going to be exactly what it needs to be when you when you record it, it and that's it will yeah it will it? it'll be what it needs to be 
I mean, it's, it's like you often say, you can take a, a, a breath where you are. You don't actually, you know, you don't have to go to the yoga mat. You don't have to stand on the top of the mountain and go on. You could just take a breath in the moment. And literally, I just sat down and went, <sighs> spotted the stuff and it's like, let go. And then I, you know, after I posted it, I thought, come on there, let's get you out for a walk. Yeah. And, you know, and that whole thing of like, you know, getting outside and running. Oh, I wasn't running around. The dogs are running around. And you're, you know, you're, you're letting everything go into kind of like Mother Earth. So, yeah. yes. I, got, I haven't got anything done today. <laughs> well, you've made a very, I mean, you know, that that video about changing perspective, if people can actually pay attention to what you're saying rather than watch the weird things that are going on with your face, it's very insightful. <laughs> it is. It, it is. is very insightful. So good it's, things have come out of that. And you made me laugh as well. So that's, that's good. Well, but, laughter, <laughs> but laughter is great for letting go, isn't it? Mm, absolutely. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember once, my, my, and sadly, my father um, was an alcoholic. And um, I'd gone to stay with my parents. And mum and I were walking to what we call the top where all the bars and shops and things were. And in the distance, I could see this man weaving and wobbling and going back and forth and I thought oh god it's dad right and I was watching in kind of like a mild horror but amused at the same time I mean I loved him despite his drinking anyway he gets closer to us and you, you could tell my mum is not impressed so he <laughs> launches into this lamppost tries to hold on to it, swizzles round and lands on his bum on the floor. And my mum just laughed, and this hysterical laughing. And I, I must have felt like I was the parent because I looked at the pair of them in utter disgust, <laughs> right? And my mum couldn't stop laughing. And the whole time, I was only there for about four days, but the entire weekend, every once in a while, this must have been a nervous laugh or something. She just laughed and laughed and laughed. And she said it was the only way she could let go of that kind of frustration, the, you know, the whole, her entire life. <laughs> but she but she wasn't, she just, well, she could hardly stand up because she was just <laughs> laughing. And, and I didn't let go because I just kept looking at both my parents and thinking, well, why do you think that's funny? Get up off the floor. <laughs> So yes, <laughs> but laughter is. I should have laughed with her. But laughter is so such an amazing way to let things go. As my mum has ably demonstrated on many many occasions. <laughs> Absolutely, and it is really important that we do allow ourselves whatever we need in that moment when we need to let go of whatever it is that we're processing or we're trying to process, it's really important yes. that we do yeah. allow that. So, you know, your mother might have been thinking, oh, oh no, Dale's really upset with me now because I'm laughing, but she still had to do it regardless oh, of God, yeah. what he was doing to you because she needed that for herself. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that is hard, isn't it? It's like knowing that you need it for yourself, but it might not actually look, it might not be might not look appropriate. <laughs> it might not be the most um, socially acceptable response in the moment, but if it helps you to let go and, and deal with what's happening in the moment for you, then it's mm -hmm. you know, as long as nobody else is actually getting hurt, then it's probably okay. Um, before we move on, can I just say hello? We've got Keris and Jackie and Sean with us at the hello. moment. Hello. Thank you for joining us, ladies. Yes, um we are, as you know, chatting about letting go. And if you do have anything that you'd like to share with us, then then do drop it into the comments. I can see the comments um, and I will refer back to any new ones from time to time. So they will be seen and they will be responded to, I promise. So, um, so yeah, this subject of letting go, it's um, it's been rather on my mind a lot lately. And as you know, you've seen mm. in what I've been the words that have been spewing into my blog have been full of it. Um, I've been processing some emotions and realizing the importance of being able to accept life as it is rather than how we want it to be. Um, 
I've been reading this incredible book. It's, it's not very often that I start a book on a Friday and I finished it by the following Friday. Wow. I struggle. I really tend to struggle to read a book, no matter how good it is. You know, I very often will very rarely get to the end of a book that I'm trying mm. to read. But this one has kind of changed my life, I think. Um, it's been called, it's called Letting Go of the Person You Used to Be by um, Ooh, I like that. Lama Surya Das, who's a Buddhist. Um, a Buddhist teacher and it has absolutely blown my mind and it's given me such a lot to think about not just about what's happened in my life in the last couple of weeks last couple of months but also mm. going back and looking at all the stuff that I've been dragging behind me mm. even though I thought I'd let go of a lot of stuff and I thought I'd processed a lot of um, old hurt and a lot of old resentment and uh, you know all this realizing actually i may have been able to put it into some sort of container that i could manage it in but i still got it i'm still carrying it all around with me and through um the practices that i've been doing i've been doing a lot of meditation i've been doing a lot of writing and being able to actually see either through my you know through my meditation practice or through my writing, and you, I'm sure, mm. will be able to talk a lot more about writing as, as a tool for this, um, just to see what it is that I'm feeling, which, you know, when, you, when you're caught up in your head and you're thinking about all this stuff, you can't always mm. see it so clearly, but actually being able to look more objectively at what you're feeling is makes mm. it so much easier to be able to say, okay, so I'm feeling that, that's okay. It's okay that I'm feeling that. And I can feel that right now, but I know I'm not going to feel that again. I'm not going to feel that forever. And it's being able to let go of that, mm. thinking that you have to keep on to those emotions, which is one of the things, you know, if, um, for example, I my, my brother died. Now, I remember for years after he died, being absolutely distraught because I didn't feel like I was grieving for him anymore. And it suddenly dawned on me that I wasn't feeling that tightness in my chest. I wasn't feeling that agonizing grief anymore. And I thought in that moment, I, I was really upset because I thought that meant I'd stop loving him mm -hmm. and I'd stop missing him. And, and it, I didn't realize that what it meant was that I processed my emotion about hanging on to that idea that I had to be the grieving sister forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so letting go of those ideas as well, it's so, we don't even realize we're carrying this stuff around with us. And it's been such a, a really profound experience. This last week has just been quite incredible. Um, yeah, it's been it's been great. And I know you've had a lot of experiences with where you've had to let go of stuff as well. It, uh, I've been doing mine a lot through uh, meditation and through the breath, mm. which is my main thing, and writing. But you... You have different tools. Well, you use those as well, I know. But you have um, one particular tool that you love to turn to, I know. Well, mine is always my journal. Yeah. Always. And, um, I mean, interestingly, I didn't journal this morning. Um, I got up and put the news on, which is very, very unlike me. And um, I watched all the stuff about um, the things mm. unfolding in New Zealand. And I thought, that's very strange. Why was I called to, you know, watch the TV rather than journal? And it, it really struck me that, you know, as, as a, a world, you know, we're still not very, um, still not very cohesive. We're still not processing things. We're still not recognizing that we are one world, one nation, one people, one love. And for me, that's what writing does is it is it brings everything into channeled through some kind of instrument onto a piece of paper it channels all of that stuff that you know that i'm trying to process from the world just into one place and and i think that's what i find so i find so powerful that you can just sit and put your mind somewhere else but you're but you're your consciousness, the consciousness of the world knows what to put on that bit of paper for you. So I find that that and walking my the most incredible, incredibly powerful things to do. But this morning actually was more of a talking practice. This microphone's driving me insane. <laughs> 
I do, it's like I'm looking at it thinking, dare I change anything? Let me. <laughs> dare I let them? Ooh, no, is that better? Ah, oh, dear. It's um, not, I, I don't know how it is to people watching, but it's not bothering me. It's just, it's oh, just it, there in the back. It, oh, you were hearing it through. I can, I'm getting feedback. So uh, there's, some, there's something going on. It's probably my, my dad in the ether because this morning, you know, I didn't journal. I watched the TV. But actually, after I did the dog walk and very unusually, I, I, um, I did some ironing. I never iron anything. I did some ironing, but while I was ironing, I was talking to my dad. You know, you talk about your brother, and um, that 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 kind of process of grieving and letting go. And today is the day. Oh God, don't cry. Today is the day that my dad died six years ago, and uh, I was ironing away this morning, and I went, okay, then pops. What's it like in heaven today, then, mate? What have you learned? And I thought. What is coming out of my mouth? Ah, ah, hello, Pops. How are you doing? What's it like in heaven? And what have you learned? And I thought maybe, maybe that's really what I should be asking myself. What's it like in you know? What's it like on Earth? You know, how's life going? <laughs> yeah, what have you learned? But it's, <laughs> but but one of the th you know, I I when it comes to death. I think it's such an honor to be with uh, this is I think this is it's all connected to what you said about your brother and the New Zealand thing and my dad when we when we're with somebody in that moment where they take that last breath and let go of their earthly existence sorry Esther um, it's such it's such a honor such a gift I mean I remember standing there with my um, with holding my dad's feet um, giving him some kind of energy, some love, some breaking. I was going, go to the light, Dad. I mean, he's obviously he was going to die because of what was going on. And he said, I'm trying. And I'm stand and I remember standing there praying to all my dead rallies, going, Betty, come and get him. Come and get him. <laughs> and, and and just um, but more Betty than anyone else. One of his many, many, many fab bits of family is like, Betty, come and get him. It's like, Dad, you gotta go. And then watching that final breath and going, that's too late now. I can't do anything. It's gone. And that's where you, you, you just, but lots of people don't have that honor because like the tragedy today, they're taken away by some, like, but being able to, being able to process how you feel about it through writing helps you to eventually, I believe, make sense. You know, if I think back six years ago, I was just, you know, so emotional. And now I'm like, you know, come on then, come on then, Georgie, what's going on? So, you know, it's that, you know, that writing through it. And I do write through it every year. You know, I think about, think about those moments. And, um, and I think that, I think that if, you know, when, whenever, whatever it is that happens in your life, if you find a tool that really, really works, just keep getting back to it. Keep getting back to those, those things that help you to, to process, whether it's, it's dream work, whether you have hypnotherapy and then write, there's always, you know, there's always something that, that will help to move that stuff on. I mean, take going away from, from that, because I'm feeling quite emotional. I've been doing some work this week in letting go of um, my ex-husband and then some people who are fairly abusive to me. And I've written through it, but I've had some, some visions that are really violent and dreams that are really violent. But I, what I believe in reading, you know, when I've read back and looked at it, it's actually about cutting the ties. So with the babysitter who was the, the kind of the first abuser, oh, I was slashing his throat and gouging, gouging his eyes out. And I was sitting there thinking, I'm a peace loving, whatever. And yet that just vicious anger but being able to allow it to come up. And then the other morning, about three mornings ago, I woke up and I had a big sword 
and I was stabbing it through Dickie Quick's throat and I woke up going, oh, journal. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on here? It's like, oh my goodness me. But you know, I feel so calm now. It's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it, you needed to get it out, and so you, you it came through your dream, and then you've written it out, and and then it's done. And that's that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Is that it does it enable you to let go of the stuff that that is still there about him and your experience with him. Ah, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it it didn't take years to release all this stuff. Okay. I mean, there's, there's somebody in my past who. 27 years ago <laughs> 27 years ago it really destroyed me completely mm. and i can't i know that i can i need to kind of i need to release a lot of stuff around that and i str i really still do struggle with that because when i try and do the forgiveness thing and i try and breathe through it it's still there's so much pain there that i can't i can get to some of it but there's some of it i think i've locked away quite but I haven't found the key yet. <laughs> so could you, like I just did, I mean, I'm I'm shocked at the violence of my feelings. Is there a way through your breathing and your meditation, I have no idea, through your breathing and your meditation, you can go to a place of, like I did, and just eat, eat, eat it all out? Is it, it, Would that, I, I, I don't know... It's funny because he actually turned up in my dream this week, but in a very, very Ooh. different situation. In a very, no, I wasn't, wasn't killing him. There was, there was physical, <laughs> but I wasn't killing him. Um, and it was really weird because I, I don't think about it very often, but I, he was in, mm. and I think that because of doing so much this week, letting go of, so I think that maybe I've actually started that process. Now. I think that the fact that I'm even thinking about it. The fact that I'm thinking of, I mean, I, he never leaves my, you know, he's always in my mind because it's it's still part of my life now. Um, the, the, mm. the, the, the repercussions of the relationship are still part of my life now. Mm. But I think that I'm actually on that path now. And I think it's going to take more work to be able to release that. But I think through, mm. I think that it will come out in my writing. I think it will happen through my breathing mm. and my meditations and mm. my just general, you know, my dreams. I mean, that dream about him was really weird. Mm. But I think it's going to come. I, I, I do think that there's, there's a reason for this all happening now. Mm. It feels like something that started this this year, I feel like this this last couple of weeks have, have given me so many lessons mm. in things I need to let go of mm. that it feels like actually I'm at a major turning point here that I'm releasing a lot of stuff from not just now but mm. you know it's a lot of stuff going to come out now and I don't think it's any coincidence that I'm doing this book because I'm sure that's going to be oh, in yeah. some ways a conduit for a lot of my healing they're going to probably be an awful lot more words get written than get published <laughs> and that's always the way isn't it? but that's actually that that when i think about what i've just talked about that's about cutting the ties and when you write too much you've expressed and allowed a lot of stuff to come up and then you have to cut out mm -hmm. what is not relevant for what yeah. you eventually yeah. want so so I think there's a metaphorically there's there's something here about I was going to say trimming I don't want to say trimming the bush because that sounds I just have this picture of this big bush and you know when you say stuff like that it sounds rude <laughs> that, that thing of you know you know we, we, we are this massive tree but sometimes we you know we, we do have to just cut the dead wood out in in whatever way is is appropriate yeah. Mm -hmm. I know when I wrote my first book, um, I wrote loads and loads in a, in a couple of weeks before mm -hmm. I decided that, you know, this I'm actually going to publish this. I'd written about 18,000 words mm -hmm. and I went back to it once I decided, right, I'm going to do something with this. And I'd given myself a ridiculously short amount of time. I went back and I thought, if I publish this, no one's ever going to talk to me again. <laughs> because that first those first 18,000 words or how much it was was me clearing the yeah cl clearing the clutter and mm. processing a lot of what I needed to process at the time in order to be able to write the book that I eventually wrote so I am fully prepared for the fact that when I'm doing my writing 
I'm going to end up with an awful, and then I'm going to have to, I'll be on the call, call to you. Well, what do I do now? I can't cut this. <laughs> well, yeah. well, thinking of things that you can do with writing and letting go, and um, I'm, and I actually thinking about this for myself. I mean, I've got a log burner upstairs. You know, when you have written too much, you know, not you know, and if if you've written, you know, like a letter that you to somebody and you want to do whatever, I always end the letter with thank you, and burn it. I have a ceremony with a candle and whatever. But thinking about what you've written on a computer with books, print it out scribble something on it like a message that you want to be taken to the universe and burn it it's funny you should say that because jackie said she does that she writes stuff and then she burns it that's one of the comments on yours yeah, that, um, yeah I, i've done that before i've got like a new year thing i remember me and my friend a couple of years ago um funnily enough the year before i had the, the new year that, that started the, the the breakdown year we wrote a load of stuff about what we wanted for the year and then burnt it and i didn't realize i was actually going to burn my life down at the time <laughs> but it was you know it was incredibly cathartic to write to write stuff down and burn it it does mm. it, it's when you watch it going up into making all those lovely ashes and just goes and it is yeah so maybe that's what i'll do then that's a very good idea well i think <laughs> We're coming up to a full moon. I haven't got my calendar in front of me, so I don't know when the full moon is. Jackie will know. She'll absolutely <laughs> know. She'll tell us in a minute exactly the date. But on a full moon, that's always a lovely, lovely time for letting go. You know, the fullness of um, fullness of the moon, the energy is is ripe. And, you know, again, it's, it's creating that atmosphere. You know, like I say, I'm lucky I've got a log burner, but equally you could get some kind of metal bowl or or if in your garden you've got like a big oil drum and but it's it's important i think that you know if you're printing something out or um there's something that you specifically want to let go of is is to write to write whatever it is but always say thank you so you know on your book the book thing that you want to burn say thank you for you know your muse for giving you those words and then just burn it i mean mm. Years ago, I, I'm not going to tell you who the person is or what the, the story was, but she, this friend of mine had a, had a partner. She moved from Wales to somewhere else. She had a partner that she had been with for, I don't know, 12 or 13 years, very much in love with him. And he started to behave strangely. And then she discovered what he'd been doing, which was work. Uh, and she moved back to, to Wales, but with, with her, she bought all of the, the most beautiful love letters. They were divine. And um, she came and sat in my garden, we got a bottle of wine, and, uh, well, actually, we just burned it all on the grass, which probably wasn't a very clever thing to do. We had a big bonfire. And uh, she sat and read the letters, but she wrote something back to the letter but always look for the, the the gratitude, the thanks, the gift. She was just incredible. It was the most emotional experience. And then when she was ready, she burnt it. Not long after, she met someone, had a baby. They, well, they met, they lived together, they had a baby and everything. Um, you know, that letting go really changed her life but for me it was a very humbling experience to I didn't hear what was in all of the letters she read one or two to me but but I think I think the important thing is you don't write anything in anger mm -hmm. like you, you know you because all you're doing is let anger go out you know we can express ourselves in in, in, in a much more beautiful way we, we can we have that ability and it's about that emo you know when you talk about the emotion and seeing the emotion in a different way it's allowing that to come out i mean if you feel angry jump up and down on it and then chuck it in you know i've done that in the past you know got something it's like jump up and down <laughs> ah, breathe calm burn <laughs> it's always 
hard to breathe as well, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got a few comments. Jackie does indeed know when the full moon is. It's the 21st of March, and she points out it's also the spring equinox as well. It's oh, a really good time to do some, um, you know, to mark that time, to do some rituals. That's a really good time. Patricia, um, or Patricia sharing about uh, grieving and letting go. She watched her father deteriorate over a decade, and it was a very long time ago, and she still... You know, she's still grappling with those emotions. So love to you, Patricia. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and Jackie as well is talking about her dad um, who has dementia. And I, yeah, that's going to be really hard. I really um, feel for you there, Jackie. Um, Patricia doesn't write anymore, but she's found art. So that's another way that you can express your emotions is through art. Um, Incredible. I, 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 I envy people who are able to do that. I, I bet you produce some beautiful stuff in your um, releasing there. Um, Karis is talking about how it's really hard when we're grieving for those still living. And that can be in all kinds of ways, of course. There's, there's not just about health. There's all kinds of ways that we have to grieve for people who are still living and let go of attachment and let go of those relationships and let go of the hopes and the you know everything that comes with that letting go of how we hope things were going to work out can be really hard, particularly when it's somebody that's still living because there's that little bit of you that feels like mm. there's hope um, and it's it can be really hard. So thank you for sharing that. Because that's like, it's expectations, isn't it? We have mm. a, an expectation of of what something should be like and when it's not, it's so, so sad and so disappointing. Yeah. And, that, I think, is what we have to let go of. That's the thing that we struggle with the most, isn't it? It's we hope that something was going to work out a particular way. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't, we spend so much time either trying to force it to oh, no, or, yeah, we keep it fantasizing about it, regretting, wishing we'd said something different, wishing we thinking, if I'd done this, would this have been different? And it's, you know, it's just, we're just torturing ourselves with it because... Mm. it is what it is now and and it's really hard to accept sometimes but the yes. only way that we can find peace with it is to accept it the way it is now um mm. whatever way that is um oh well, Karis is um talking as well about New Zealand Karis lived in New Zealand for a very long oh, okay. time she's an old school friend of mine so yeah I bet you're really feeling this today Karis um mm. can you show if you need to talk about it love um and Sean is uh, Sean is a big fan of journaling, as we know, and mm. so she talks about how great that is for letting go and moving forward with your life. Then you write it all down, and then you can move on. And um, Jackie, um, I love this. Jackie has got a uh, let it go, let let go tattooed on her hand, and oh. um, I'm just going to share with you, Jackie, if I can get it on the camera. I've got that, which I think to me is essentially the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's, um, you know, that's my reminder to breathe. You've got your reminder to let go. And I think mm -hmm. basically we're reminding ourselves of the same thing there, that we mm -hmm. can just come into the moment and just accept and, and move on. with and, a new, I've, new and I've got massive poppies on my back, which represents that staying, that kind of staying strong and tall, you know, even in the shit of your life, the rubble, mm -hmm. the poppy mm -hmm. grow in the most, you know, we, we, we're just experiencing a big poppy. All the poppies are, are appearing and they just appear in different places. And to me, poppies represent strength in amongst all of whatever. It's funny, mm -hmm. isn't it, with tattoos, how we, you know, we so often we have these tattoos that, that are a lesson that we've had to learn. Like, I've got... Um, I've not where I've got a long sleeve top on us, so I can't show, but I've got on mine um, this arm. I've got a couple of George Harrison related tattoos, and one of them is All Things Must Pass, yeah. which is the name of his first album, his first solo album. And it's it's mm -hmm. my favorite. It's the album which, if I could only choose one album I could ever listen to again, it would be oh, that one. I um, can choose one. Oh, I couldn't choose. I would, I would, I would, I would hate to have to make that choice. But if I had to, <laughs> I think mine would be. I would pick that one. <laughs> I think mine would be Nirvana. Never mind. Would it? Because <laughs> well, it's what well it is life, isn't it? It's well that's what's happened. Well, never mind. I guess. Yes. Yes. Oh, funny. How funny. 
<laughs> You're sending me off on a track now. I'm going to be playing Nirvana later. I'll be there in my, in, I'll be there in the, in the lounge with my air guitar. Being <laughs> or maybe not. Or maybe oh, not. Live stream that. <laughs> no. No. Did you, you do know, I was saying to someone yesterday, you know, I always wanted to be a rock star. But I can't sing. You know, I've, I've been for sing, I've been for singing lessons for talking on stage, and that you know that is about managing your breath and your confidence. But I can't <laughs> sing to save my bloody life, and I often get told to shut up. And it's like, well, that's very, that's very rude when I'm enjoying myself. So no, I'm not going to live stream me singing. <laughs> yeah. so, I've, always, I, I've, I've had a similar urge as well. I love the idea of being a rock star, yeah. and. Uh, last year or was it the year before I, I set myself a bit of a challenge to do things that scared me and I did some fairly crazy things and uh, it was really good fun I mean some of them were really silly but they were big things for me and one of them was I'd always wanted to sing with a band behind me so I went to the open mic night in my local pub <laughs> I, sang, yeah. I sang a George Harrison song I sang um, something George Harrison song, and I forgot the words because I was so nervous I forgot the words. Come on, then, give us a little and ready. But no, I'm a terrible. Yes. <laughs> now, that, now that you've admitted you've done it, you have to do it live for the entire world to see. There's no band behind me, I'm not doing it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. there's my air guitar. Someone else has got a saxophone and a recorder and a violin and a pair of drums, set of drums, not a pair of drums, set of drums. <laughs> What more do you want? What more do you want? Right, yes. Esther Eagle. Let's wrap this up. Yeah. So it's getting Jackie, a bit silly now, isn't it? <laughs> so Jackie told us the full moon is on the 21st, which is always also the autumn equinox. Yeah. Great time for rituals, great time for writing, burning, and and kind of like breathing into um letting go. See, I'm giggling now. It's just I've got <laughs> pictures of you on the stage in my head but <laughs> but it's about getting prepared now letting your unconscious mind think about the things that you would like to let go of writing about them um whatever needs to come up daily but but creating that lovely ritual around full moon to to let go and remember to have some fun Yes, always have fun. It's, it's always it good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been brilliant. This has been really lots of fun. Very. I love the fact that we've ended on such silliness. Um, <laughs> so thank you, Dale. And um, thank you to Sean and Jackie and Karis and who's the other? Patricia? Yeah, Patricia. Thank you so much for all your comments. Um and um dale you can find dale's uh work at book brand business, bookbrandbusiness.com bookbrandbusiness.com and i am at space to breathe academy.com and on dale has got um you've got a Something going on, something going on now? Um, oh, you did it last week, didn't you? Sorry. <laughs> you did a challenge last week, didn't you? Oh, yeah. So the, <laughs> the seven day book challenge has ended. It'll be back uh, off the top of my head. I think it's about April the 1st. The 101 days of being me journaling adventure is ongoing. So I started it at the beginning of the year and um, we are currently on, I think, it's day 60 something. 16, 67, 68, 69, mm -hmm. I can't remember. Um, so that, that will go all the way through today, 101. And then what I'm going to do is turn all of that content into a journaling book that will come out because I'm, I'm currently writing another book. And uh, there's probably like six million other books inside of me. So that, that'll come out in December. So we've got the seven day challenge, 101 days. But I've also got the big book in a circle for, for those people that want to kind of come and be in a, a writing community. Whether you want to write a book or not, you know, there's, there's, there's writing support. Um, so that's that's about to launch. That goes li live properly on the on the on the twenty fifth. And apart from that, I'm supposed to be writing my book this weekend. 
<laughs> yes. Oh, well, you get on with it. Thank you. Um, Thank you <laughs> yes. Well. Yeah, that's what I've got planned for the next three hours now before Marcus comes home. Um, oh, if you are, and, and um, I've got a, a 10 day challenge on my website as well. So if you want to um, explore what you can find in your breath and if you you know exploring your emotions exploring just what happens when you get quiet and you breathe if you go to space to breathe academy.com there's a 10 day five minute breath challenge where all you've got to do is sit for five minutes you don't have to change your breath you just have to stay connected to your breath and amazing things might happen for you um so i've also got in a couple of weeks i've got a group breathing course starting as well where i'll be taking you through the basic pranayamas to help you to improve your quality of your breathing, the increase your lung capacity, and really deepen your connection with your breath so that you are able to breathe better, manage your emotions better with your breath, and be able to relax your body and mind a lot easier through your breath. So lots going on on both mine and Dale's uh, website. So take a look. I'm going to put some links in the comments so you can access all of that information at your leisure. And thank you very much, Dale. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. And have a lovely Friday. Yeah, have a great fun Friday. Bye. Keep smiling. Bye-bye.